Hammersmith Hospital, when I went there, oh my goodness, the, the sky high. They will, they will look at you from, from head to toe and to toe, from toe to head. You're not there anymore. There was somebody who looked at me like that, as if I'm asking for money to have, my, uh, to have a bit of dinner. <laughs> and then, all of a sudden, they were, huh? he was just hitching on our car. I was driving home. <laughs> but my point there is, if you dishonor somebody, you, you treat them shamefully and even humiliate them. Are you following? Yes? Okay? So, honor can be showed in action, word, words, and even thoughts. You can look at me, but I'm not really sure if you honor the way I speak. You might be thinking, mm, ba, in this English naman to, bisaya naman. <laughs> you could be saying, why is he talking, speaking in English and the accent is bisaya? I don't care. Who cares? <laughs> okay? True honor comes from the heart. You could say something, you could show something, but true honor comes from the heart. That's why Matthew chapter 15 verse 8, These people honor me or draw near to me with their mouth, but their hearts are far from me. Honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Oh. And that is true. We could be singing wonderful songs. We could be singing with vo good voices. But the Lord says, it's not a guarantee that because you are singing a worship song, you are praising God through songs, that your heart is honoring Him. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far away from me. Amen? Okay, another example, no offense. I like examples, you know. Have you heard somebody saying to you, I love you, and then your heart would say, would just be like saying, ooh, you hypocrite, I don't believe you. <laughs> Have you experienced that? Ooh, maniwala naman ako sa'yo. Yes. Huh? Did you discern when when your husband say how are you? Did you think what is he he trying to say? That is, is he really saying I miss you or send money? It's Christmas. <laughs> Just an example. No, I, I'm not talking about your personal. Just to show you my point. So he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So we could be in church, physically present, but our minds could be thinking, anong oras kaya ito matapos? <laughs> what time does the service finish? What, 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 what have they got for the party? I thought this is a Christmas party. And the, and the, the singing, the praise and service is taking so long. And here comes the pastor. I'm just halfway, you know. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> third, okay, we understand we understand uh, that the reason why they were not all answered because they did not honor the Lord. Second, we understand the meaning of honor. Now, I would like to tell you that no honor, no rewards. And that reward could simply mean the answer to your prayers. Yes? Okay. So, Luke chapter 5, verse 17. Now, it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there, was, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Take note. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Who were there? Huh? Did it say disciples? Come on. Do you understand English, dude? <laughs> no, just joking. Who were there in front of Jesus? There were Pharisees and teachers. Okay, let's carry on. Verse 18, Then behold, men brought on a bed and, ma 
a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. Okay? And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Are you following? So there were scribes and Pharisees. There were lots of people. And there was, there was a paralyzed man lying on, on the bed. Wow. It sounds so simple. If your loved one is lying on the bed, would you bring him to the church on his bed? I don't think so. <laughs> Are you with me? Oh, you would just say an excuse. Lord, you understand how difficult it is to bring my brother to the church. Just to bring him without or without the bed is difficult already. How much more if you have to bring the bed with the patient on the bed itself? I don't think you will do that. Huh? And di pa uso wheelchair no. <laughs> Nobody has invented wheelchair that time. And we're not sure because he's paralyzed if he could he is comfortable or he could sit on the wheelchair. Some people could be so stiff. We got lots of patients who are so stiff. Ito turn mo. Because they're so stiff. But my point there, despite the difficulties because of the crowd, they still honor God because they believe in God and they didn't even think how much would it cost to repair the roof just to bring that patient in front of Jesus. While these Pharisees and teachers, they reason out of themselves. Okay, let's see. Matthew chapter 9 verse 3, And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemies. How did they dishonor God? Huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> Take time to understand. And at once, some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemies. Huh? Impostor? No. How? My question is, how did they honor, dishonor uh, God or Jesus? Okay, from the heart, they did not even say anything. Who is this man? Your sins have forgiven. They said, this man blasphemed God. Only God can forgive our sins. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, Jesus, knowing their thoughts, they were not talking about it. They were just thinking about it, but in their thoughts, they dishonor Christ. Are you with me? Pag hindi pa ka nakaintindi, Tagalogin ko na. So Mark chapter 2 verse 8, But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? So they were not talking about it. They were just thinking about it. Let's see what happened. Immediately, he arose, took up the bed, and went out of the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Let me remind you again. Who were with, who were with Jesus? Pharisees and, te uh, and teachers, scribes. Were they healed? Huh? Okay. The, the teachers of the law themselves, the Pharisees and the scribes, were not healed. May I remind you what's happening here? Okay, where is it? Luke chapter 5, verse 17. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Let me ask you. Anybody here who is free of 
sickness, illness, or any infirmity? Free, free. Anybody who is free? Ah, hindi niyo ata naiintindi ang tanong ko. Let, let me reverse my question. Anybody here who is sick? Sick of something? It could be hypertension, it could be diabetes, or it could be, it could be ulcer. Anybody here is suffering illness or disease? Yes. yes. So, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them, but not all of those people who are suffering sickness are healed. Only the paralyzed man. Huh? Huh? Not all people who have faith will honor God. Straight to the point. Because they honor God. How could I be sure about that? First Samuel 2.30 Those who honor me, I will honor them. Does that make sense? Okay, fourth. Kakahingal din pala. <laughs> okay, fourth. Full honor, full reward. The third one, no honor, no reward. Full honor, full reward. It means the reward you get was determined by the honor you give to God. Get it? Okay. Another example. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a certain, this is Matthew chapter 8. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Guess what the centurion said? The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Is everything okay here? Huh? Is everything okay? Okay, of course, it's, everything is okay. Let's carry on. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. To, and, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Verse 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. In the Roman Empire, or Roman army, Roman legion has 6,000 soldiers, one commander. Where's the centurion pastor? Out of 6,000 soldiers, there, is six, there are 60 centurion who reportedly directly to the commander. 6,000 divided by 60. How, how many soldiers uh, has a centurion had? 100. Thank you very much. So, this centurion has 100 soldiers under him. Are you following? So, in other words, when he said, just say and it will be done, he is saying, I have authority because I honor my country and my superiors by respecting their authority. So all I have to do is to speak a word and those under me will respond immediately to my directives. Being a soldier, the centurion understand how authority works. Are you with me? So he said, I am not worthy. Teka, 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 teka. I'm not sure if you really get this. Why is the, 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 the Israelites, or why are they, were the Israelites looking for a king? Come on, come on. Huh? Because they were under the Roman regime. They were slaves. They were, they were under the authority of the Romans. So they wanted deliverance. They wanted freedom. They wanted to do what they wished to do. Are you with me? Now, a Roman soldier with 100 soldiers under him said, Lord, I'm not worthy. Wow. <laughs> Was it simple? Just imagine yourself. You are a Filipino. We are all Filipinos by the nose itself. Oh, my goodness. There's no argument about that. <laughs> but my point there 
My point there, just imagine yourself a foreigner not having a pointed nose just like the British. And your accent is obviously not British like mine as well. And then the British soldier or the British, the British uh, centurion will say, I am not worthy to receive you. Wow, hallelujah. Are you getting my point? That's how the centurion honored Christ. Although the Israelites were under the Roman regime, the centurion said, I am not worthy to receive you in my house. That's how honor works. Amen. And guess what happened? Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way as you have believed. So let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. What a reward. If it happens today, would soldiers do that? Eh? Would people do like as, as the centurion has done? I don't think so. Okay, another example. From there, he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and wanted no one to know it. But he could not, he could not be hidden. This is Mark chapter 7, verse 24. I would like you to understand the context. So from there, he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and wanted no one to know it. But he could not be hidden. What happened? For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him, and she came and fell at his feet. Let's see what happened. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, let the children be filled first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. What was the word emphasized? Dogs. Let's say Bing, just for example. You came to Jesus asking for the healing of your daughter, just for example. And then Jesus will say, it is not good to take the bread from the children to give it to the dog like you. How would you respond? Ay, kalu uyman. <laughs> you would feel self-pity if somebody called you a dog. Would you? Ah, so pala ako, di kagata na tayo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you with me? Okay, let's see, let's see. And she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. Imagine if it was this generation being told, Dog, Excuse me, what did you say? I didn't even know a question. Just a simple mistake of, uh, of the waitress serving a Diet Coke, a Zero Coke, whatever Coke. She was so mad enough because it was his right. The right ka John. While this mother was called a dog and yet she still honored God. Then he said to her, for this saying, go your way, the demon has gone out of your daughter. Let's put it to context. And when she had come to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. Okay. For the, con <laughs> the contemporary Christians, especially the western part Americans, or let's say British, apparently. If they were called a dog, what? Are you calling me a dog? You must be out of your mind. Okay, another example of what possible uh, uh, reactions the woman could have. What kind of minister are you? You're a preacher? You're a pastor? You're calling me a dog? Excuse me. Am I in the right place? Are you following me? <laughs> Okay, another possible reaction. How dare you insult me this way? Let's say, for example, let's say another example. 
<laughs> How about Sister Imelda? I called you a dog. Would you be happy and come here, come here again? No way. <laughs> yes? Okay. Another possible reaction. I came here for help and this is how you treat me? Does it make sense now? Hello? Parang nagutom agad kayo. Nakita niyo. <laughs> yes? Okay. Another possible reaction. You're a racist, man. Oh, my goodness. Does that make sense? Did the mother said, you're a racist, Jesus. I'm out of here. Okay? Because I'm great, you're a Jew. You're calling me a dog. Aside from that, you sit down there with your staff and ignore a woman who's crying for help for her daughter? What kind of minister are you? They could be, she could be saying, oh, I get it. There is no multitude to impress right now because they were hidden in a room. So that's your true color comes out. Tagalogin ko pa ba? The way you react, sana yung pagkain nila, wala pa ah. <laughs> Some of the rea- most of the reactions were thinking, oh, where's the food for the party? <laughs> okay? You hypocrite! I've had, had enough. I'm out of here. Mm. There's a lot of people behave like that. You insult me, you call me a dog, then I'm out of God knows high Christian ministry. I just go back to the Catholic. Oh, hallelujah. I just go back to the born again across the, across the road. I just go back to where I belong. It's not fair. I left my church and then he, here you are called a dog. It's not good. Yet the woman honored God and she received a full reward. Her daughter was healed. Okay? Mga palakpak nyo, sinasabi nyo patapos na ako. <laughs> Thank you. Don't worry. I'm time conscious. By 12 o'clock, I'll be finished. How can we honor God? Any idea? Huh? Follow His commands. Very good. Obey. Follow His commands. Obey. Huh? Love God more than yourself? Okay, let's go on to that. You must not have any other God. The first commandment that most people forget, God said, you must not have any other God. So what's the point? Let's say for example, let's say for example. Shall I use you again? Can I use you again? (laughs) Next time, Bing will sit at the back. Okay. Let's say, a, a man... No, I'm not talking in reality, just an example. <laughs> a man said, I love you, Bang. Yeah. And yet, at the same time, he's loving somebody. <laughs> Would you be happy about it? No. I just remembered a man b- buying uh, a, a Valentine's card. He, he, he told the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the sales lady, uh, Miss, do you have a to my one and only card? Yes, sir. Uh, can I buy 10? <laughs> he, he was buying a to my one and only and then he bought 10 because he got 10. <laughs> okay? Honor the Lord's name. Thou shalt not use the name of the Lord God in vain. Jesus Christ. That's not honoring the Lord. You use the name of God as an expression, especially in a bad way. Yes? Let's say, you poo in the toilet and you didn't close the door properly. It sings so much and you would say, Jesus Christ, man. Just taking the name of the Lord God in vain. Honor the Lord's name. Third, honor the Lord's day. We're not talking about Sabbath day or Sunday as long as it is the Lord's day. We, the Christians now celebrate Sunday as the Lord's day because the Lord was risen on a Sunday. 
So we celebrate the day he was resurrected, not the Old Testament Sabbath day. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter to the Lord whether, whether you worship him on Sabbath or Sunday. Do you think when you go to heaven, the Lord will ask, what day did you worship me? Hallelujah. <laughs> yes? So honor the Lord's day, keep it holy. Do not consider it common, but esteem it valuable, value it highly. The, let's say, today is a Sunday, I am honoring God, I keep the Lord's day, I will come to church because it is a day to celebrate my faith with the Lord. Amen. And people, not all people could come to the church because they do not honor the Lord's day. They would rather go somewhere and enjoy themselves rather than going to church. Fourth, honor your parents. It is the first command with promise as of Ephesians 6 chapter 2 verse 3. It might so that it might go well with you, you will have a long life. Last, receive him and his servants. Why? Matthew chapter 10 verse 40. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. So if you receive the Lord, you should also be expected to receive the Lord's servants. Does that make sense? And that is why he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He carries on to say in verse 42, And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. I've got two minutes. <laughs> when my mom died, I, I went home uh, uh, without any preparation. And once again, thank you to all of you for your financial support. And can I use you, Sister Floor? Yes. Sister Floor gave me a very big amount, and I was so shy to receive it, but she transferred it online. So I just have to thank you. But she told me, this is not enough for the work you have done. And that is one way of honoring God's servant. Amen? I am not using her example because she gave me a lot. I thank you all actually. But I just show you the point. She gave it to me because of the work I am doing for God. Amen? And some people... They could not even give, they could not even receive the Lord's servants, and they are proud enough to say, I have received the Lord as my personal Lord and Savior. Excuse me. The Lord says, if they receive you, they receive him who sent me, and if they listen to you, they listen to him who sent me. Challenge. Sabi ko sa inyo, it's too well, tapos eh. <laughs> Do you understand why some people easily get answers to their prayers and some don't? Yes? Okay. Do you honor God in your life? In what way? Huh? <laughs> okay. Do you want to be rewarded by honoring God? Thank you very much. Conclusion, 1 Samuel 2.30. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be slightly esteemed. I would like to take this opportunity to invite our visitors to pray for them. And if you are not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ, I would like to tell you that the Lord is not after our religion, but he is after our relationship with him. I don't care which church do you go. I just want you to make sure that you are saved. Amen? That no matter what happens, you, are, you, you will be saved. Just like, just like the thief that was crucified with Jesus, he said, Jesus, remember me when you will be in paradise. And Jesus said, I am telling you today, you will be with me in paradise. Save or not? Save. Save because he believed in Jesus. Amen? Amen? May I invite those 
who, are, who have just attended with us or who are not sure of their salvation yet, honor God by coming forward and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You should be ashamed if you have stolen something, but receiving the Lord, you should not be ashamed of it. Okay? Uh, please come. For those who, who wanted to receive the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior, if you are new to the church, we would like to offer prayers for you. It doesn't mean that all who have come here are not sure of their salvation yet. Please come forward. Thank you very much for coming. Okay? You should not be ashamed of it. The Bible says, those who are ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of them in front of my father. Uh, dito po kayo, harap po kayo sa kanila. Ano pong name? Lord and yours? Shelly. Okay. Uh, huh? Florden. <laughs> ano pong name? Leia. Okay. Lord, Lord and Shelly. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Please come. Don't be ashamed. It's one way of honoring the Lord that uh, you would receive Him as personal Lord and Savior. Okay, thank you very much for coming. The Bible says, even a single person who, who returns to the Lord, who comes who come back to the Lord, millions of angels in heaven will be rejoicing. So let's pray for them. Uh, I invite you to repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving your life and for saving my life from the penalties of sin. I confess all my sins and I ask forgiveness. Cleanse me by your blood. I believe in you. I open my heart and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe now my name is written in the book of life. Amen. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Okay, let's pray for them as, as they receive the, the prayer of acceptance. Lord Jesus, we thank you for touching the hearts of these brethren. It's not an accident. It's not a coincidence, Lord, that they are with us today. It has been appointed, O oh God. It is part of your plan that in all things you work for good to those who love you. And as the Bible says, O oh God, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So as they receive you as your Lord and Savior, let your spirit come and dwell upon them. And let there be their guide. Let, their, uh, let the Holy Spirit and your word be their light every day. And we claim, Lord, that they will commit their life and time to you. We thank you for blessing their lives. May you bless their uh, May you bless their jobs, bless their health, bless their families, bless their needs, O oh God. That as you have said, O oh Lord, if you didn't spare your only begotten son, you would not also spare the needs of this brethren of ours. We unite with their prayers that the desires of their hearts will be granted in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so as we welcome them, I would like to invite the birthday celebrants as well. Uh, Sister Leia, Paul, and Joy. Although there's coming celebrant on Thursday, but she will celebrate it uh, tomorrow. I thought it was Thursday. Please come forward. Para isahang bati na at magbati na rin tayo sa isa't isa ng, ng maligayang Pasko. <laughs> okay. So where's Paul? <laughs> okay, let's pray to the birthday celebrants and welcome our visitors, greet our birthday celebrants. Okay? Lord, we thank you for the life of Sister Mary Rose, uh, Joy, Paul, and Leah, oh God. And we, we are so grateful, Lord, that they have given their lives to this ministry. May you bless their hearts, desires, their future, their families, their health. And we claim, Lord, that they will be used for your greater glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, let's greet them and greet each one, each other. A uh, uh, blessed Christmas. Okay? Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the church.